I hate to disappoint you, but I don't give a shit about football or the Cowboys. What I do care about is misdiagnosis in psychiatry. A 2001 study from the Journal of Psychiatric Studies shows, and I quote, misdiagnosis or incomplete diagnosis of bipolar disorder is extensive among psychiatrists. And it goes on to say, psychiatrists who reconsider diagnosis in overlapping areas of bipolar depression, major depression, and other disorders are more likely to make correct diagnosis. It suggests that between 15% and 40% of patients with bipolar disorder are misdiagnosed. Bipolar disorder is characterized by episodes of a major depressive disorder with manic tendencies. So why are almost half of these people being misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder? Well, I have the answer right here. This is from helpguide.org. It's called Understanding Stress, Symptoms, Signs, Causes, and Effects. What is stress? Now, stress is a normal physical response to events that make you feel threatened or upset your balance in some way. So, events in your environment, normal response. The body's defenses kick into high gear in a rapid auto automatic process known as the fight or flight reaction or the stress response. The stress response also helps you rise to meet your challenges. It goes on to say that the warnings and symptoms of stress are as follows. Go on to physical and behavioral symptoms. Okay, and I'll read them for you. Cognitive symptoms are memory problems, inability to concentrate, poor judgment, seeing only the negative, anxious or, or racing thoughts, constant worrying. So anxiety is a symptom of stress. Moodiness is an emotional symptom of stress. Irritability or short temper an emotional symptom of stress, agitation, inability to relax, feeling overwhelmed, sense of loneliness and isolation, depression, or general unhappiness. So even the most commonly diagnosed so-called mood disorder, depression, is simply a symptom of stress. Physical symptoms, aches, pains, diarrhea, constipation, nausea, uh, dizziness, chest pain, rapid heartbeat, loss of sex drives, frequent colds, behavioral symptoms, eating more or less. So when you're stressed, it's going to lead to your eating disorder, which is going to lead to further symptoms of hunger and stress combined. And if you're intoxicated too, more symptoms. But we'll get into that in a second. So there's nervous habits, use of alcohol, cigarettes or drugs to relax, procrastinating. Okay, so one of the symptoms of stress, the behavioral symptoms, is you're going to turn to the prescription drugs, which are the number one killer of people. And as I've shown you before, they're misdiagnosing these patients, giving them prescription drugs that they sell to their friends that either cause them to die or people who live in homes that are broken to die because they're more susceptible to it. Once you've broken down the family structure by over-empowering women, You've made their children more susceptible to taking prescription pills. Now, one last article, and I'll leave it alone for now. BBCnews.co.uk. What happens when you get drunk? So we go on to the symptoms of being a drunk. Okay? The symptoms of being drunk, such as disturbed balance, slurred speech, blurred vision, heavy sweating, dulling of our sensation of pain okay it also affects the outer layer of the brain the frontal cortex remember they used to stick do lobotomies by messing up your cortex the region concerned with conscious thought which is why people under the influence of alcohol often lose their inhibitions so they lose their conscious thought they lose their inhibition they get misdiagnosed whether they're a child a young adult or an older adult they're misdiagnosed, they're given this dangerous prescription pill that kills people, and if they don't take it, there's a good chance that they'll sell it to somebody who will, and who will end up dying because of it. Fuck football. Let's end psychiatry and save our kids. 
Because our kids are victims of football too. How many spine injuries? How many deaths every year? But I'm not going to get into that because this is about psychiatry. To stop being a dumb, knucklehead football player and football fan and a drunk idiot who's trying to avoid their stress and nutrition because you are susceptible to this too. Because you acting out because your favorite football team lost might lead you to being in an institution. You acting out because you're drunk, because your favorite football team won, might lead you to being an institution. You stressed out and lack of nutrition might lead you to being in an institution. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them drug you. They are sinners. They work with their devil. And just like Bernanke, just like Petraeus and Panetta, they are parasitic filth. Greedy hogs.